In this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate a machine that uses essentially any kind of mechanics. It could be could be sprocket, could be lead screw driven, timing belt driven. And the reason why we calibrate a machine is so we can make sure that the, the axes will move to the spot that you command it to move. That is to say, if you tell the machine to move two inches, it should move two inches in software and it's understanding of two inches and it should also move two inches in the real world. But we need to start somewhere and we need to figure out initially what our steps per inch is going to be. So you're probably asking yourself why would I even need to calibrate the machine after I figured out the steps per inch according to my mechanics. And the reason is not all mechanics are perfect. Even lead screws or roller chain especially will have a stated error um, along its, its length. So uh, if you get a lead screw, it'll uh, in the specs it'll give you an error of, of a thousandth of an inch or several thousandths of an inch. It'll be off at the end. Same thing with roller chain. Roller chain will be off because it's essentially not a, a solid material that, that is machined. It is uh, composed of many, many links that can have an error over a long, uh, long span. So we need to really uh, calibrate the, the machine um, over that long span so we can get it perfect. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the steps per inch. These steps are derived from the stepping motor and the driver. Typically the stepping motor produces 200 steps per revolution. That is to say the stepping motor when the shaft turns 360 degrees or one full turn um, there will be 200 steps within that. The driver is also capable of increasing this number of steps. You can multiply this number of steps by gen generally multiples of two. So you can go, if it's um, the driver produce, uh, you set, you can actually set it to uh, produce one half steps, or that means two steps per each of these steps. So then you'll have 400 steps. Um, you can also increase it to one eighth or one quarter or one sixteenth. I generally, for the X and Y axes, I go with one sixteenth micro stepping. So for this example, let's pretend that I am setting the driver to one sixteenth steps micro stepping, and it would be sixteen steps for each of these steps for the two hundred steps. So what we have to do is we have to take the two hundred and multiply it by sixteen. So this would come out to be 3,200 steps. So to review, in this configuration, the motor has 200 steps per revolution. We're multiplying it by 16 steps, and we have 32 steps for one full revolution of a motor shaft. Now we have our sprocket, and when the motor shaft turns one full revolution, we'll need to come up with the number of inches that this motor would have moved or this motor would have moved the thing that it's moving. So just for illustration purposes, we need to determine um, essentially the circumference of the pitches. Uh, so we would start here and then it would move all the way to, to this point. So to do that, we need to know what the pitch of this sprocket is. And a pitch is distance from crown to crown. So we have our sprocket and the crown is located at the very center, sort of at the peaks of each tooth. And the measurement between those two, in this particular instance, this is a number 25 sprocket. It's one of my favorite because the, the roller chain is light and the resolution is pretty high since the pitch is really small. And this would be 0.25 inches between each tooth. And now we'll need to know the number of teeth. And re remember, this is the drive sprocket. And this is really the only uh, device that we will need to, to use for the calculations because this is being connected directly to the motor shaft. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine teeth. So to get the pitch circumference, we'll need to take that 0.25 inches and multiply it by the number of teeth, which is nine. And with that, we get 2.25 inches. So in one revolution, we're able to travel 2.25 inches. To find out how many steps it takes to go one inch, we'll take this number and this number, 3,200, and we'll divide 2.25 inches 
to get the steps per inch. This comes out to be 1422.22, but this is actually only going to be a temporary number. Um, as I said earlier, this is a theoretical number. It is based on the drive sprocket and um, theoretically how um, the pitch that it has and we need to figure out the real world number of steps we're, we're going to get to. Uh, let's go ahead and do a, a small exercise for lead screws so we can um, determine this for lead screws as well. So this lead screw has 10 threads per inch but has also multiple starts and the multiple starts is five starts and you can also see that by looking at the very end of it and you can count the number of starts or number of threads start at the end and you'll count five going around this particular lead screw. Before we do any calculations with this screw we have to really understand the characteristics of the screw. The first thing you'll notice with a screw like this is that the helix is much more angled than a standard screw. To understand what this half inch screw with 10 TPI or 10 threads per inch and five starts means you can draw a representation of it and even though it has 10 TPI or 10 threads per inch, the threads are going at a great angle like this. But this thread is not the same thing as this thread. It actually, you have to pass five threads before you get to this thread again. So just for illustration purposes, this is what the thread is doing. It's actually kind of curved like this. And you'll need, uh, the screw needs the remaining part of the rod to be threaded so the nut will not skip. So you have one thread actually per half of an inch. So every time you turn turn the nut around the screw, it's going to turn one half of an inch. So let's say this is half of an inch and then the screw continues to to thread and then you have another half of an inch equaling one inch. Now I didn't I didn't put the, the correct number of threads um, in here, I'm just using this as a way to illustrate it. So even though it says 10 threads per inch, it's really um, effectively two turns per inch. We can also state this as for one full turn, it'll travel a half of an inch. Now we have a value that we can plug into uh, what we were doing before. So we had 3200 steps per revolution. And in this case, we have 0.5 inches per revolution. So we simply divide these, and then you'll have 6,400 steps per inch. And we have the steps over the inch, like we did 3,200 over 0 0.5 equals 6,400 steps per inch. So now let's try to figure out how we can make the machine move the way we want to in the real world, and what specifications we need or configuration we need to get to this point. I'm going to draw a rectangle that would be representing the machine. And we're going to pretend that this is 8 feet in this direction and this is 4 feet in this direction. And we have our um, we have our spindle somewhere within this rectangle. Now before we do this we obviously have to enter in the information that we uh, came up with before, the 1422.22 uh, for the sprocket. And we should get pretty close to the actual actual number when we, when we move the machine. So in order to get the best result, we want to try to get the longest measurement we can out of the axis. So I'm going to move the, the spindle or, the, or the, the end mill to this position, and then I'm going to measure from this position all the way to this position. In the beginning we should probably put, we should probably go to about one inch or so back just so we have a little bit of room of, uh, room to play with. So on the machine we're going to move the, the bit to this location, we're going to mark it, and in the software we're going to set this to zero for x-axis. I'm going to assume this is the, or we'll, we'll let this be the x-axis going back and forth in this direction, and the y-axis will be in this direction. So we'll mark it here, we'll set the x to be 0 at this point. Okay, so now we need to get the the axis to, I would say, about 96 inches. That's about right, because 96 inches is 8 feet, so I need some wiggle room. I'll go to about 94 inches. 
Okay, so we don't overrun the table or anything. We're gonna manually jog from this location to the 94 inches, and we get pretty close and we know that we're not gonna fall off the edge. We will run the G-code of G0 X 94. And then it should, if you're close enough, it'll just move itself a tiny bit to get to that location. Now we're gonna have to take out our measuring tape and we're gonna measure from this location all the way to the 94 after we've marked this location with the, the end mill. And we're gonna say that we got uh, 94.5, let's say. Let's say we got the, that's way off, but let's say we got the measurement of 94.5. What we're interested in is this 0.5 inch of inaccuracy. So we need to figure out how to get it to the 94 and calculate or change our 1422.22 um, in a way that it will uh, it will reduce this number to instead of 94.5 to just 94. So the easiest way to really understand the process or try to get a, a sort of a visual concept of it is we un we know the the steps per inch or the three theoretical steps per inch and we know how how many inches the machine thinks we went, which is 94 inches, and we know the actual measurement, which is 94.5, and we're, we're half of an inch off. Um, we need to know how many steps it took to get from here all the way to here. And to get really close to the actual, we're going to add a half of an inch worth of steps here in, in software. So how many steps did it take to get all the way from here to the theoretical 94 inches? Well, that's... A, that's 1422.22 times 94. So this gives us 133,688.8 repeating. Now we need to make an adjustment. We need to adjust this number um, plus 0.5 inches. And what is 0.5 inches? It's really half of this. So we're gonna take 1422.22 and divide it by two. So one half of this, which is half of an inch, because this is one inch worth of worth of steps, is 711.11, one repeating. Actually, I said this really should be minus because it went 94, but we measured 0.5, so we need to subtract half of an inch. So we still get the right number. We're just gonna take this number here, and we're gonna subtract 711.11 .11 from this number. So let's do that. And we get 132, 132,977.77. So this represents our adjusted number. This is the number that we really need to show in our machine um, how to get from 0 to 94. Now, this is not the number we, obviously, this is not the number we put in the machine because uh, this is an awfully large number and this is representative of 94 inches, not 1 inch. So we need to put this back down to 1 inch. So we're gonna take this number and then divide it by 94. So 94 divided by 132, 977.77 equals 14, 14.657. So this is our new steps per inch number, our real world non-theoretical steps per inch number. Now you, you might be thinking, well, we did uh, take this 94 and then subtract the 0.5 uh, worth of, of steps, but that really isn't perfect. That's going to be off maybe a fraction of an inch, maybe a thousandth or so of an inch. But you can keep doing this process until you get as close as you want. Um, you'll probably notice that when you do um, do this process, you will get to a, uh, a number that is pretty much dead on. So I probably only need to do this once. So just to review, what we did was we found our theoretical number, we went to the machine, we measured from one point of the machine to the next point of the machine, um, a long distance. We took that number and we multiplied it by what our theoretical number was. We took the difference between the real and the, the theoretical number um, in measurement. We were off 0.5. If it, if it was measured as 94.5, so in this instance, we measured from 0 to uh, 94.5 in real world. Now, we needed to go back in this direction to get to the 94 inches. So that, that's why we subtracted half of an inch from this number. Now, if it showed us that we were located at this point, which was, let's say, 90, 93.5, 
then we would need to increase the steps to get to this 94 real point here. And that means that we would add a 0.5 inches to this number in terms of, of steps. And this is the same thing with, um, let's say, a sixteenth of an inch or um, eighth of an inch, whatever. Just take this number, the 1422, this is one inch. And if it's a sixteenth of an inch off, then just divide it by 16. If it's an eighth of an inch off, divide it by, um, divide it by eight. And then you'll get your, the number that you need to um, add or subtract. And we would subtract it from the, the large amount of steps it took to go from here to here. And then we divided it back down to the number of steps per inch after we subtracted um, however many steps it would take to, to adjust it. And we found our actual number that we need to put into the machine to make it accurate to the real world. The process is exactly the same if you wanted to do this for lead screw or roller chain um, or even or timing belt. It would even be the same if you were using rack and pinion. Um, with timing belt, I didn't really go over the uh, how you get the steps per inch, but it's the same as the sprocket. And the, the timing belt has, or the timing pulley, has teeth just like a sprocket does, but it's more of a sort of a rectangular configuration. And you would just find the pitch of the, of the pulley, and then you do the same process as you did with the sprocket. I hope this helps and you're able to get your machine to be accurate, dead on to the positions that you need to get to. And you'll also, this is a good point to, to mention, that you're getting, um, you're getting the point as accurate as you can uh, with the measurement device that you have. Um, obviously, you know, the, the making small parts will be super accurate. Um, and when you go to the way you measured it, um, it is only as accurate as, as, as your measuring device. So um, try to get it as close as possible uh, so you can get as accurate of um, machine cuts as you can from a long span. So the longer the, longer the span you can make to, to measure and, and calibrate, the more accurate your, your cuts will be, um, especially in the, in the small regions.